You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you on the Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus: Bjorn's Path. So the last place we left off, we were having a nice little chat, catching up with Bjorn in the cafeteria after all the lectures, and I believe we are about to go do something with him. So sit back and enjoy, guys. And I keep noticing that freaking door is open. It must be super cold in this place. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Please enjoy the next 20 minutes. All right, alarm chain, you're up. Let's go. <clears throat> All right. We could go somewhere and relax. Some rest would be nice. Oh, damn, my back. I stand up and sit down again instantly, feeling a jolt of pain shoot up my back. Hmm? Are you okay? Yeah, I must have been sitting in a weird position. Bjorn extends his paw and grabs mine, lifting me up. Thanks. So we pretty much have the rest of the day to ourselves. Uh, you have any plans? Not really. We're supposed to be in town until dinner. I have an idea, though. Give me half an hour. I have to ask Travis about something in the meantime first. And maybe have a small snack. Go with him. I'll wait in my room, then. Some rest sounds nice. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back with you. Okay. Oh, I should drop Miko a message, but I can write while walking. We walk outside of the cafeteria together. Bjorn, looking ahead, his paws stuffed into the pockets of his hoodie, while I tap at my phone. Okay, done. I gave him a heads up to not look for me, and as I'm skipping the next lecture. No, oh, wait, let's... let's see that. Ha, <laughs> nice eye movement. Bjorn nods and keeps on walking ahead in silence. Maybe he needs to be alone for a while. After all, we spent a lot of time together today. He didn't really have a longer moment for himself. If he's living with his parents, he probably doesn't get too much time alone. Or maybe he's just tired and I'm overthinking it. That's not likely. That's not unlikely. I could always just ask him. Hmm. But I don't. Okay, that's my room. See you soon, right? See ya. See ya. Got it. <laughs> you guys know me. I direct my steps to my own room, the carpet muffling my steps so that the calm afternoon atmosphere isn't disturbed. And here I am again, within the four walls that serve as my temporary home. Like a snake shedding its skin, I can finally take off any masks I wear around others. I'm not tired, but my head feels empty. The lectures drain me completely of my mental energy. I drop the camera bag on the floor and sit down on the bed with a loud creak. Oh, what I'd give to have a mattress this nice in my own room back at the dorm. Sprawling out on the bed, I look up at the ceiling. I took some nice photos today, but I don't feel like doing anything with them now. I should also write down some notes from the lectures, but I don't feel like it either. <laughs> I send Mom a quick message informing her that we're staying in the guest house today and toss the phone beside me. I don't really feel like doing anything, to be honest. I have half an hour for myself, but I don't know how to use it. Now that I think of it, it's been a long time since I had a completely free time like I have now. I'm not used to boredom. I haven't felt it in a long time. Usually in situations like this, I just take out my phone and start reading something. But somehow, I don't want to do that now. I feel something arising within me. I need to create a sudden pull resonating deep. I've taken a few nice photos lately, but it was always just documenting, not creating. I should start with an idea first and then try to find a way to execute it. I used to do that, and I love all the photographs I created this way. Lately, especially after moving out, it wasn't in the right mindset. I wasn't in the right mindset, but now I feel like I could get back to that. I open my eyes, letting the world slip back into my consciousness and stare at the wooden ceiling above me. What should I create? I feel like I should look for the inspiration within me, not outside dive deep inside and see what I resurface with. A nap would be good for that, but even though the lectures drain me, I don't feel sleepy at all. Instead, I take out my laptop and start sketching. With all the snow outside, maybe I could capture a shot of Miko laying on a hill, looking like he's suspended in the air. Then, I could turn that upside down and enhance it in post-production. It would look like he's flying or ascending. Sort of how I feel right now. I try out different angles and compositions. My skills in drawing are pretty much non-existent, but thankfully enough for the task at Paul. Then I switch to some other ideas popping up in my head, trying to capture them before, my, before they dissolve forever. I get a message from Bjorn. Huh. Already? I was sure just a few minutes had passed, but it looks like I spent half an hour thinking. I came up with a few ideas that could work, though. Closing my laptop, I grab my camera bag and leave the room. Ho! Oh, you got here fast. I wasn't doing much. I just closed my laptop and went out when I got the message. Come in, then. 
Travis should be here soon. At least he said he would be. But what are we going to do, by the way? I asked Travis if he brought any consoles with local multiplayer games with him, and he said he has one he can bring here. Playing games together. Huh, I can't remember the last time I did that with anyone, not counting online matches. It sounds fun. I'm in. It'd be nice if we could order a pizza now. I doubt anyone could deliver one here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Not with the road to town blocked by snow. Oh, it shouldn't take long to make it traversable again. I bet it'll be cleared before dinner. I sit down on the bed I spent the night in and lean against the wall. By the way, how are you doing? You seem somewhat absent-minded after the lectures. I can come back later if you're not feeling well. Oh, don't worry. I'm just a bit tired. I didn't sleep too well last night. I just needed to lie down for a bit in silence. I made myself a coffee. Do you want one? I'm fine, thanks. Not sleepy yet. Bjorn walks up to the window and looks outside, silence falling upon us. Somehow it's hard to find any words. Any words now? Bjorn's bluntness helped to ward off my awkwardness before, but now that he stays silent, I'm not sure what to do. Maybe you'd like some chocolate. Oh, I'm definitely not turning down chocolate. Bjorn passes me the bar. I take the whole row and bite into it. The chocolate isn't great, but even bad chocolate is good. A lack of any feeling is disappointing, but it's still chocolate. A chocolate I got for free on top of that. Thanks. <laughs> Bjorn breaks off another two pieces and devours them with a smile. Do you prefer plain chocolate, or did they have nothing else in store? I like just plain chocolate. It's what I'm used to. Usually got a few bars with me. A few bars? In case of an emergency. An event like today. I didn't know when I would. I didn't know when would be, when would be the next time we could visit a store, so I grabbed a bunch for the for the trip. I love the ones stuffed with nuts too. My grandmother used to buy them for me back in Poland. I liked them a lot too. Nuts had some pleasant crunchiness. I've got. I've got whole. I've got a whole pack of the Hershey's cookies and cream bars that have just been sitting around for like a year. I need to break into them. The chocolate should still be good. Wait, Poland? Huh? Oh, right, I didn't mention it before. I was born in Poland, but my parents moved here with me when I was little. So you're not a Norwegian? I think of myself as one, even though I wasn't born here. I don't have many memories from Poland anyway. I haven't visited since we immigrated. Wow, I'd never guess. So, what was it like to grow up in Poland? I don't remember much. It was just some vague feelings in a few scenes. I remember the flat where, the flat where we lived, or maybe I only think so. Time distorts memories. Aside from some scenes I can recall in full details, everything is just a blurry lake. Weird how our minds register some scenes in such detail that remembering them is like playing recorded tape. And it's not like they were some big, important moments. For example, me helping my grandma with a crossword in the park one Sunday morning. One sunny morning. She was even wearing a green vest and earrings that reminded me of avocados cut open. Her hair was looking pretty that day. It must have been October or September. The trees were just beginning to wear autumn hues, but it wasn't cold yet. A kid with a school backpack walked before us, led by his mum. My grandma commented that, with how well I'm helping her, she's sure I will be a great student once I go to school. And were you? Not really. Uh, was she disappointed? She didn't live to see that. She died maybe two years later before we moved out. She must have known, or she must have already known she was sick by then, but of course nobody told me. I wouldn't have understood anyway. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It was long ago now. She's mostly just a memory. Only sometimes I wonder if she'd be proud of me if she was still alive. I'm sure she would be. Maybe, maybe. She was easy to please. <laughs> it's hard to find any fitting words now. And Bjorn doesn't seem to be in need of any consolation, though. It must have happened almost 20 years ago, after all. I can only be happy all my grandparents were blessed with health. Time distorts memories. We forget the experience of the everyday and remember what our, what our minds deem important. We forget the bad stuff, too, so the past can always stay sweet for us. We're floating down a stream, and the water behind us stays turbid, undulating and unquiet. Sorry, I didn't mean to tank the mood like that. Life isn't all rainbows and sunshine. It's fine. It's stupid to shy away from heavier topics. We all have our burdens. Housekeeping. Weird. It doesn't sound like the janitor I met yesterday. I guess I should see what they want. Be right back. <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling. Hello, a fresh delivery of digital entertainment for you. The Tanuki enters the room without further ado and closes the door behind him with a light kick, carrying a console and a bunch of cables and controllers in his paws. 
His tail stands behind him excitedly, a bright smile lighting up his face. Travis, what did you bring? I have Super Shatter Sisters and a few other games you might like, all multiplayer. Travis drops all the equipment onto the bed before grabbing the console and turning it on. But I'd start with that one. It's the most fun, and you don't need to be good at it to have fun playing. Honestly, it's a bit of a button masher, like all the fighting games. Can your laptop be used as a screen? I think so. You can try. If not, we can use the TV set. The Sanuki busies himself with plugging in the console to the TV. In the meantime, Bjorn and I sit on the bed, a curve in the mattress making me lean into his arm. With Travis, the mood in the room immediately gets lighter, any sort of heavy atmosphere hanging in the air dispelled. Okay! Looks like everything is working. You guys know how to play it? No, I need some instructions first. Never played it, never played it either, somehow. Really? Guys? It's like the essential party game. Travis walks up to us and gives us both a controller. <laughs> Over the next few minutes, he gives us a crash course of the game, explaining the mechanics, basic controls, and the goal. Then we start playing him. Oh boy, it's just pure chaos. Oh no, they both have ADHD. They're fidgety. Travis is getting into the game hard, jumping around in tandem with his character on screen. Honestly, it's silly to watch. Bjorn and I both struggle a lot in the beginning, and on the more than one occasion we mistake the other characters for our own, resulting in us falling off the map in seconds. But even if we have a little idea of what we're doing, the game is fun and engaging. Even if we wouldn't be playing or my, even if I wouldn't be playing myself, just trying to follow what's happening on screen would be entertaining. Don't run away! I got you anyway! <laughs> in your dreams! Look, another gift box. What does this one do? <laughs> no idea. Me neither. There's so many of them I can't remember. We're all doing fairly bad, but in no small part because the screen is definitely too small for us. Travis is a bit ahead of us in points in every match, but between me and Bjorn, it's a fierce competition. Ha! I win! You win this round. Don't get ahead of yourself. Start the next one. I need to beat the two of you. Ultimately, after two more rounds, Bjorn comes out on top, obliterating both me and Travis with a new character. Travis wasn't entirely happy, arguing that choosing this character is pretty much cheating, but I agreed with Bjorn that if the character is available in the game, then it's fair game, then it's fair. <laughs> this was nice. I'm tired now. Tired? How? We were just sitting on a sofa playing a video game. Mentally exhausting. Have you seen how he fi have you flailed around? I'm not surprised that he's all that tired. We all sit back in comfortable silence, leaning against the wall. It was an hour well spent. If it wasn't such a cloudy day, we could have watched the sunset in a little bit. But the sun didn't come out in much of its cloudy cover all day. That was nice. We should do this again. Next time I'll get your ass. So, did you like it? Quite a lot, yeah. Too bad I barely know how to control any of the characters. I mentioned that's a bit of a button masher, right? I'm glad the deaths weren't permanent. There's nothing like dying in the middle of the game and having to look at your characters, at your friends having fun for the next ten minutes. Yeah, some games are like that. I mostly play single-player games. That's never a problem in them. Oh, really? You don't enjoy some competitiveness? I usually play for the story. There's not much of it, if any, in the multiplayer games. A good game could be as good as reading a book or even better. I enjoy that added interactivity sometimes. Really? You? I thought your team books... I thought your team books... I thought your team books all the way. I thought your team books all the way. It doesn't mean I can't enjoy a good game from time to time. I haven't found too many of them, though. I see. Anyway, we should get going. I don't want to be late for dinner. I gotta take the leak first. If you're ready, we can go straight to the cafeteria. Sounds like a plan. I don't need anything from my room. If I can leave the console here, then I'm ready, too. Sure. You don't even have to come back for it. It wouldn't be bad at all. Haha, <laughs> very funny. Better go now, we won't wait for you. <laughs> Bjorn stands up and walks to the toilet, while Travis, tri while Travis lies down on the bed with a sigh. Little Tanuki really must have exhausted himself playing. Huh. <laughs> I wish I could get excited about the game enough to feel like that afterwards. I'm surprised, by the way. I didn't know Bjorn was heavy, is, a heavy, is a heavy reader. What do you mean? You said that he's team books or something like that, right? Travis sits up and looks at me, blinking repeatedly as if he had just seen an apparition. Wait, you don't know? I thought the big guy was excited about it enough to tell everyone, especially you. You know, with you staying him with him with him last night and all. Know about what? Travis, give me Travis, give me some answers already. Bjorn is a writer. Ah, huh, right. He mentioned something about working on a story yesterday. 
He vehemently denied being a writer, though. I know he's working on a story, but he didn't tell me anything beyond that. Well, he already has a backlog of these. He didn't say anything about that. He only mentioned noting ideas for, for one. Weird. Why would he be so secretive about it? I wonder what sort of stories he writes. Gay fiction, gay fiction, gay fiction, gay fiction. <laughs> My first bet would be a high fan be a, would be uh, blah. My first bet would be on high fantasy stuff, something with magic and epic adventures. But that's usually a good setting for a novel, less so for a short story. Or maybe I just haven't read enough stories. I wanted to get back to reading after moving out, but somehow it didn't work out well. Wait, what should he be excited about? His story was submitted to a nationwide competition, and the results should be known this week. Oh, now I'm surprised he didn't mention it. That sounds like something he really should be excited about. That's why I'm surprised he's not talking about it all, that all the time. You know, people react differently to this sort of stuff. Maybe he's nervous about it. And is the contest, like, a big thing? I'm not gonna lie, it sounds like one. That's because it is. But, as I said, ask him, not me. I'm not sure if I, sh if, I'm not sure if I should if Bjorn didn't mention it himself. Maybe he's superstitious or doesn't want to tell anyone before the results. Either way, despite Travis's enthusiasm, I'd rather be cautious about the topic. Okay, you two ready? Yeah, we can go. I'll leave the questions for later. Time to fill our stomachs. Num 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 Okay. He does perfect crepes. I have no idea how they come out this nice. It's an easy recipe and mine are usually good, but not nearly not nearly as good as his. I listen to Miko talk about his father's cooking and I nibble at the food in front of me. Today we go Oh my god. Kili... Kili... Ka... Kili... Kerileet. Today we got Kili Kerileet. Cabbage rolls I know well from my home. Cooked potatoes and carrots, all topped with dark mushroom gravy. God, that sounds delicious. Kili Kerileet reminded him, both me and Miko, of our childhoods, and we started sharing our memories of our parents' cooking. Oh, the crepes were our Saturday staple. I'm not sure why, why that day, but every Saturday morning my father and I would make crepes. We usually had them with yogurt or plum jam. My father liked those the most. I like mine with hazelnut cream and cinnamon. Good lord, I'm hungry now. We don't really have to do things like that anymore, though. I don't spend more time with my parents than I have to, and they don't bother me that often either, thankfully. I miss pancakes. You know, the thick, fluffy ones, soft and delicious. Stuffed with chocolate chips drenched in maple syrup. Damn it, you guys are making me starving! Here, everyone is just about crepes. You don't know what you're missing out on. You can always make some yourself, though. Yeah, and I do, but it's not the same when you have to make them yourself. And mine rarely rise properly. Living alone is nice, but having to prepare your own food is easily my least favorite part of it. Yeah, that's pretty much the only perk of living with parents. That and laundry. Do you cook for yourself every day? Well, more like I reheat myself a pre-made meal every day, but yeah. Have you seen the prices in the restaurants here? It's crazy! $13 for a fast food meal? How the hell do people afford that? Well, people here also earn more, so the prices are fair. Well, maybe, but I'm not working here. So, take out tacos on Friday and Korean barbecue on Sunday have to do. Ah, oh, yes. The, the fritted, fritted stocko? Ah, oh, yes, the fritted stocko. What is that? Is that, what, is that really a thing? Friday's taco? Yeah, it's sort of a modern tradition, but as a lavish Friday meal, Norwegian families often have tacos. You won't see that in every household, far from it, but it's getting popular. But why tacos in Norway of all places? I don't know, maybe because a large number of immigrants bringing in their own cultures, but that's just my guess. I go back to eating the food before it gets cold. Chewing a potato, I glance sideways at Bjorn. He's still the same person he was this morning, but my perception of him changed quite a bit. With no offense to him, I thought he was a bit of a couch potato, spending his free time watching anime. Now I'm learning that he's a writer taking part in literally contests, and he told me nothing about that at all. It's just puzzling. Maybe it really isn't anything big, unlike Travis was implying. I guess I really have to ask him, but I think it's better if I wait until it's just the two of us. Yeah, that sounds about right. Bjorn, 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 num 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 num, hungry bear, hungry bear. <laughs> Good thing we're done with all the lectures today. I'm already tired and I still have a lot to do. In the end, we were the last people to stay at the table. Miko finished eating quickly and excused himself, going back to his room. Rune talked with Jorgen for most of the meal, but Jorgen left together with Lake when he finished. Devin left early, too, leaving only the four of us. 
So somehow we stuck together and moved to the lobby to continue chatting. All right, guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. Should have, uh, hopefully we'll have enough content for one more video, guys. Let me know if we don't. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this new episode of Bjorn's Path. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!